Hit it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, Edgar with Guardian Arms. We have a special treat for you today. Today, we're going to be covering a fully automatic MP5 from H&K. No, <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> this is an airsoft gun. Uh, we're, let's get to the real thing. <laughs> All right, guys, on to the real topic of today's video. Jay Inslee's Forbidden Toys. If you're not aware, Washington State recently passed an assault weapons ban, banning weapons like the AR-15 and other similar to it. Now, if you happen to own these before the ban, they're grandfathered in and they're perfectly legal, which this one is in case any of you at the state are over there watching trying to pull some uh, sneaky snake type stuff. Anyways, so I want to start a series where we cover AR builds that we put together, just showing you what different companies uh, look like, what different companies do, how they work together, and the different companies that went into every AR build that we have that we showcase here on the channel. So this one in particular, I'm gonna go through all the parts. A lot of these parts you guys already know and love, uh, or you might be curious about. So I figured, hey, let's show you what they do. So on this build here, this is kind of a higher budget build. This is, if you were to go retail on this, I would say this is closer to $5,200 before tax. Obviously, um, that's a little high or a little steep for a lot of people, but you know, I figured, hey, why not showcase what a $5,200 AR can do? Now, the parts that go into this build are as follows. Now, at the tip, we have a Timber Creek muzzle brake. This thing works amazing. So amazing that I'm debating not taking it off for a Surefire SOCOM uh, flash hider, a three-pong flash hider. I have a can that I want to put on this thing, but this thing works so well, and it keeps my group so tight. Uh, pretty sure 99% of that work is the barrel, but this... Uh, this muzzle brake and the barrel that I've chosen for this gun works so well together. Going forward, the rail is a Geisley Mark 8 rail. This is their FDE version. Their FDE version looks so sick. Uh, I've gotten plenty of compliments on how the colors all go together, more specifically in the rail. And uh, it, it's an eye catcher. It really is uh, worth every penny. This thing is rugged. Uh, it can take a beating uh, and it's well known. That's why it's on here. Forward grip is a BCM gunfighter, not so vertical grip. I call it that because it's got like a 16 letter name. Andy, do you know what that was? Got no idea. No clue. Just a slight right. angle grip. <laughs> here we have a Frankenstein mod light put together. The uh, It's a mod light OKW head with the base and the Unity mod light button. Uh, for this light. The body is black because it came off a Surefire Scout light. I, I bought the head a long time ago just to test it out. Ended up loving it. Kept the uh, Surefire Scout body on it and I'm just honestly for having a 52, roughly a $5,200 AR, I'm too cheap to go buy the body. Go figure, right? Uh, so moving on. The upper and lower receiver are Arrow M4E1 upper receivers and nothing major there nothing too crazy everybody knows arrow a lot of people know what the m4e1 line is the dust cover is from strike industries it's a polymer uh, it's their fde one and it matches again the cerakote and the theme to this gun perfectly the lower parts kit is also from strike industries it's their enhanced lower part kits the machining on it makes it very aesthetically pleasing uh, it definitely catches the eye and it sticks out you might notice that i can lock my bolt with my trigger finger and release it. That's because this gun runs the phase five version of the bad lever. This is a, a solid metal piece that connects to the lower receiver. Uh, there's no connecting it over an already existing piece. It's one solid piece and it's pretty sturdy. It hasn't failed me so far. I have this piece on almost every AR that I own. At the stock, we have the, we have the Q stock from Q Industries. This is the Honey Badger stock meant for the AR. This thing, honestly, uh, surprised me. I thought it would be flimsy, and uh, I was a little worried about how short the buffer tube is for this uh, AR. And I have no complaints. The, the stock is actually pretty sturdy, and 
I noticed right away that with this stock, a proper cheek weld isn't really a thing with these. Uh, and I went ahead and married the Q stock with the Unity Riser, Unity Magnifier Mount, and the EOTech EXPS3. And this is a one MOA dot reticle with the EOTech ring and the G45 five times magnifier from EOTech. These, this stock with these items here allow me to put the stock in my shoulder and see my reticle without having to bring my cheek down to the cheek well. I can just pick up my sights as soon as it comes up. This thing's pretty badass. It all works together really well. Uh, Unity obviously has a great name. Uh, that's why they're on here. And they're, it just so happens that they're different color FDE uh, that they have made even more shades of FDE for this build, which I think all around it came out pretty cool together. Uh, internally, we have a Timney 667S ST three pound trigger. This thing is amazing. You can go pretty fast with it, but at the same time, if you need to take a well aimed shot, the brake on this thing is super smooth. The gun doesn't move and the reset is also pretty good. At the charging handle, we have a Radian Raptor charging handle, ambidextrous. This one actually has the ports on the inside or down towards the, the front of the charging handle for helping with gas dissipation. This thing is eventually going to be suppressed. That's why I have the ported Radian Raptor charging handle in here. And internally, we have our Guardian Arms bolt carrier group. Our bolt carrier groups are made by a company called Rubber City Armory out of Ohio. Those guys pay a lot of attention to detail. They know what they're doing. We haven't had any issues with them, and that's why they're bolt carriers in here. So, All right, guys. So I purposely left the barrel information out because the guy who made it is actually out here with me. My buddy, Andy Baker. You've seen him in other videos. He owns Sheet Innovations. I'm lucky enough to have a really good friend who's also a barrel maker who makes really cool shit, and I wanted him to talk about it. I want the information to come from him directly so that you guys can get very accurate information and have more of an understanding of what the barrel is. All right, hey guys, what's going on? My name's Andy, I'm from Shooting Innovations, and uh, on this build, uh, Edgar and I teamed up, and he was looking for something a little extra, and so what we did is we, uh, we made him a 11 and a half inch carbine length 556 five, barrel but it features our 5R rifling uh, it's kind of our take on polygonal rifling so it's a series of segmental arcs uh, it shoots way faster uh, we're getting about 50 feet per second increased velocity um, the other thing is by having those arcs in there there's not hard edges or anything for fouling to collect so it actually shoots really clean uh, there's less bullet deformation and there's actually less bullet to bore friction that's how we get that increased speed uh, we even went ahead and fluted it for him and then threw on our uh, our shot peened uh, nitrided finish. So uh, this is a very durable barrel. Uh, it will not um, rust or anything else, especially since it's 416R stainless. Um, but yeah, this is one of our higher end uh, lines, way accurate, shoots way fast. Um, and of course, on an 11 and a half inch barrel, he wanted fluting, so we had to flute it for him. <laughs> Andy, where does uh, somebody find that barrel? Uh, you, can, you can call us directly. Uh, just look up shooting innovations llc.com uh, you can get the phone number there this isn't something typically that we offer on the website it's just the higher end stuff that we make for a lot of other companies but uh, yeah if you were to throw in an inquiry and say hey i'm looking for something like that on that sexy build that edgar did um, we can get you covered so cool. all in all everything put together this ends up being a pretty high budget gun but let's go off i want to show you what this thing can actually do and show you how it performs
right, guys, so we did a little bit of shooting. You guys saw what we did. I personally love this build. I think all these companies come together great. I, I think the gun runs flat. I, I think recoil is felt very slightly. Yeah, yeah, it's very minimal. You can't, you can barely feel it. That Q stock and that buffer actually do well. It surprised the hell out of me when I first put this thing together. Andy, you shot it. Did you have anything that you would add or take away? What's What's your thoughts on this build? For a high price build, I think you did well. You did all the right parts. You put them all together and they meshed perfectly. Recoil impulse was low. Follow-up shots uh, were, were perfect. I mean, no, for, for the money you spent on that, you put all the right parts in it and it ran flawlessly. Did you feel any difference uh, using that Q stock and the Unity risers with the EOTech? Was there was it a natural flow or did you have to adjust it? You know, it was a slight adjustment just because I'm used to dumping my cheek onto the uh, on, onto the, the comb of the stock, but uh, just pulling it up, side alignment was perfect, and it was it was a quick it was a quick adjustment on my part, and I was dead on. Awesome. So there you have it, guys. Before we leave you, I want to impose this picture real quick, something we weren't able to show you. This is a three round, this is three three round groups. Two of the three round groups are touching each other. That's how accurate this barrel is. That's Those are those groupings are from 50 yards and that's coming straight out of Andy's barrel. So it speaks to the quality of Andy's barrels. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that's it for today's video. I hope this answers some questions you might have on how some of these companies come together. If you have comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section. We'll get to them. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.